morning and uh, welcome to our Sunday worship. Uh, it's good to welcome our visitors into our house. If you are visiting us for the first time, please uh, feel free to worship with us. You are at the right place at the right time. And we welcome also the lady in the wheelchair. Welcome to our call. And also, it's good to see Major LC back. We thank God for that. We, we continue to pray for God's healing towards you. Thank you. Amen. When, when God blesses uh, his people, their city prospers. Uh, the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. There shall be showers of our blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be season refreshing sent from the Savior above. Amen. Uh, tomorrow, uh, being a bank holiday, so there will be no cameo, and the cafe is uh, closed. And Wednesday, uh, 29th, uh, Bible studies at uh, Freshwood at 8 o'clock in the evening. And uh, Thursday, May 30, St. John's uh, meeting at uh, 2 p.m. And on Friday, 31st, it's the 24-hour sponsored Sackthon, beginning at uh, 2 p.m. And then the following Saturday, 1st June, we have the spring sale from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Help and donations are required. Uh, and on Saturday, 8th June, uh, all the men are invited to the men's Indian breakfast and the cost is only 10, 10 pounds. Uh, that's in eight of our whole, whole windows. If we don't see any, any men, or if you, if you are a man and we don't see you on that, uh, on that uh, day, make sure the next, next meeting you sit with the ladies because that's where you will be belonging to the ladies, not, not the men. And on 16th June, that's Father's Day, the meeting will be led by the Sergeant Major and the men of the Corps. And on Sunday, 30th June, the CEO Corps officers will be away, especially at uh, Long Eton. And our meeting will be led by our bandmaster, Dr. Lisa. Uh, we remember in prayer the family of Mavis France as she was laid to rest uh, this week. Uh, Major Olive has come out of a uh, hospital Suzanne is still recovering from her Ill illness, and it was good to see Major Elsie at lunch club on Friday. We also pray for Nyasha and Ashley as they await the birth of their first uh, child. And for those intending to go to the Congress, the tickets are going uh, fast. When I checked the other day, there were very few tickets left, so if you are if you intend to go into the Congress, try to get your tickets. And this week's birthday is uh, today is uh, Annabelle's uh, birthday today. And uh, on Friday, it will be Keith Thomas's birthday. Uh, I think we'll sing their birthday in the cafe when we have tea. So let's welcome the worship team as they bless us. Amen. <coughs> Well, we thank God for this beautiful day, don't we? And we thank God for his sunshine, for health and strength, and for the desire to be here to worship the living God. And the theme for our meeting today is fellowship. We're thinking of those verses in Acts 2, where the disciples, three times it says, were together. They were together in love, they were together in sharing, they were together in worship of Jesus Christ. 
And that is our theme that we'll be looking at from Acts 2, 42 to 47. So let us pray. Dear God, we do thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for all your love and goodness, for a good night's rest, and for this Sabbath day, this day when we can come apart and we can forget the busyness of the week and all the things that may have happened, and we can concentrate upon you. So Lord, help us to be intentional in our worship, to lay aside those distractions, those things which would take us away from you, and to just think on Jesus, to be still and know that I am God. Father, we love you, we thank you, we praise you, we adore you, we worship you, because you are our God, you are our Lord and the King of kings. We bring to you our world, Lord. We watch the news and we see the fighting and the horrible things that are going on around the world. And we pray for peace, and we pray for peace makers, even in our own communities where there can be strife and difficulties, even in our own families where there can be division. Lord, may we each be a peacemaker for you. May, may we carry the radiance, the beauty of Jesus in our very presence so that we might impart that to others. Lord, we pray for all who are not here because of illness, and we pray wherever they are, Lord, that you will bless them with your peace. We pray for the France family as this week they lay to rest their dear mother. We thank you for Mavis. We thank you for her, the beauty of her faith, and we pray that that will continue to live on the influence of it in her families and many other people's lives. So bless us now, Lord, and speak to our hearts through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing another song, song 906. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. I told the story in Bible study how uh, when I was in the 80s, I heard Cliff Re Richard speak in a church in Edinburgh, where I w was at Edinburgh Goodwill. And he said, lots of people say to me, oh, you're just using Jesus as a crutch to lean on. You know, he's just somebody, you're weak, you're leaning on Jesus. And Cliff Richard said to them, well, it's better to le lean on Jesus than to lean on alcohol or gambling or drugs or promiscuity. It's, it's better to lean on Jesus than to lean on the wrong things in life. And it is, isn't it? We're weak people. We have to admit it. We are sinners, but we're saved by grace. And therefore, we can lean on the loving, strong, strong arms of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let's sing this. Remain seated to sing the three verses together.
Now, it's nice to see so many children with us this morning. And uh, in our smallest room in the house where we live, uh, we've got a picture on the wall, and it's of a rainbow fish. And uh, I, thought, I thought it was just, the, the artist is called Marcus Fister, and I thought it was just a picture, you know. But this week I found that it is actually a book. And the, the fish, the rainbow fish, is from that story. And it's a lovely story, and it fits in with part of our theme this morning about the disciples and the, the early Christians all being together and hearing the apostles' teaching, and they shared everything they had in common with one another. They shared everything. They shared their food, they shared their money, they helped one another. So this is the story of the rainbow fish. Rainbow fish was a small fish with multicolored scales. One day, a small blue fish called Bluey asked the rainbow fish, can I have one of your scales, please? No, you can't, said the rainbow fish. Go away. They belong to me. Well, you can imagine the, the blue fish, Bluey, was very upset. And he went and told all the other fish at the school of fish. And he said, that rainbow fish, he may look pretty, but he's not very nice. And as a result, nobody would talk to the rainbow fish. Well, the rainbow fish was really upset. In fact, it even started to cry. And that's quite difficult when you're swimming about in water. <laughs> you don't see it very often. So he went to the only friend he still had, who was Sammy the starfish. And Sammy the starfish said, go and visit the wise octopus, who's called Wanda, because she wandered all over the place. So Rainbow Fish went all over the sea trying to find Wanda. And eventually, he found Wanda, who had wandered into a cave. And he told his sad story about how nobody loved him anymore, and he was a lonely fish. And Wanda said to him, you have to share your colourful scales. You may no longer be the most beautiful fish, but at least you'll be happy. Rainbow Fish tried to say, no, I'm not going to do that, but suddenly Wanda disappeared in a cloud of ink, as octopuses do. So Rainbow Fish decided to take the advice of the wise octopus Wanda, and finally, as he swam about, he met with Bluey, and he gave him one of his scales. And Bluey was so joyful and happy, and he was once again a friend with the rainbow fish. Well, you know what it's like when you give it away, give something away, you soon have a whole queue of people uh, queuing up outside. And before long, all the other fish heard about the generosity of the rainbow fish, and they all wanted a coloured scale as well. Well, Rainbow Fish couldn't say no, so he gave away all his different coloured scales, but he did keep one for himself. And he found happiness and friends because he shared and he stopped being selfish. Sharing is a very easy thing to say, but it's a diff difficult thing to put into practice. You know when you've got your packet of your favourite sweets, you know, whatever it is, crunches or whatever, and somebody says, can I have one of them? And you think about it for a while, but it's good to share, isn't it? And there's a lovely verse in Hebrews which says, and do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. When you share something, your time, your love, your money, your presence, God is pleased. Isn't it wonderful that we can please God by sharing what we have with others? Thank you for listening. And now we're going to...
take up the offering. And as we take up the offering, we're going to sing a little chorus together. As we are gathered, Jesus is here. Thank you. Thank you for your giving. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we have all gathered here this morning because we love you. We are all the church of God. We are all your children. And this morning we just lift our hearts to you in gratitude. We place these offerings before you because we love you. Help us to use these gifts wisely, Lord. Help us to tell others of your love. We are all one body. We all belong to you. And we thank you and we praise you. Amen. Um, it's lovely, talking about being together, it's lovely to have the fellowship of the band um, on a Thursday evening who are generally quite kind to me, so that's really nice as well. Um, so it's, it's really nice. And today we're going to play um, a tune that I expect you'll know. It's by Geoffrey Nobes. It's a prelude on Ascalon. And the words in the songbook are number 77. Fairest Lord Jesus, Lord of all nature, O thou of God and man the Son, thee will I cherish, thee will I honour, thou my soul's glory, joy and crown. Prelude on Ascalon. <laughs>
Thank you, Ben, for that beautiful song of adoration and praise to our Lord. Now we're going to sing a song that was in the happiness and harmony. If you remember that song book that came out, I think, in the 70s or 80s. And I chose it because it goes so well with the um, theme of our meeting, Fellowship. We have Fellowship by David Knight. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, and we repeat that phrase, we have Fellowship one with another. We listen to the melody, and then we will try. It sounds like a cowboy song, you know. So if imagine you're on your horse riding along in the west, you know, slapping your thigh as you go along. <laughs> You can sing it. So we listen to the melody and then we try and sing it together. goes on the second bit goes um glory hallelujah doesn't it do you want to play that little bit it's a sort of slide down that's it only that's it <laughs> okay let's have a go so I go, Jim. beautiful little song isn't it and uh, really put, puts you in the image of riding along on your horse with your Stetson on roaming up the cattle in the west or down in Bath in the park so there we are so now we're going to listen to the Bible reading which is brought to us by Theodora from Acts 2 42 to 47 good morning this morning I'll be reading Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. The fellowship of the believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and to the fellowship to the breaking of the bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. 
All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and good, they gave, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere heart, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Amen. Thank you. Now let's sing another beautiful song, When the Music Fades. And it speaks about going back to the heart of worship. And that's what fellowship is, isn't it? Fellowship is not just us here together, but it's fellowship with our Heavenly Father. And knowing that holy communion, the communion of spirits between our spirit and God's holy spirits. Let's sing this lovely song together. What springs to your mind? What do you think about? What does fellowship mean to you? If you look it up in the dictionary, it has many meanings. Brotherhood, sisterhood, communion, camaraderie, fraternity, kindness, sociability. It's a lot deeper than simply a cup of tea and a biscuit after the meeting. Last year at Rotary, the members were talking, we were talking as a group as to how we could increase the membership of the Rotary, and several Rotarians said, we must have more fellowship, more activities to encourage fellowship in the club. And the use of that word surprised me because I'd only ever heard it used in a religious context. 
In an earthly sense, I think it's another name for companionship and sharing. But in a Christian sense, it goes a lot deeper because fellowship is a trinity of communion between God, ourself, and others. That triangle of communion. There was a 12th century monk called Ariad, called, and he called fellowship spiritual friendship. And sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that fellowship is nothing more than being social together, you know, having a harvest lunch or some other meal. But fellowship, firstly, is all about God, not all about us. So first of all, the first thing that fellowship is, is devotion. And in the verse preceding our Bible reading, in verse uh, 41 which Theodora brought to us so well, after Peter's first sermon, 3,000 people were baptised. Think of that, 3,000. That must have taken all day and more to baptise them all. And then we read, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. Devoted themselves. If we are devoted to somebody, you know, you're devoted to your wife, aren't you? Or your wife is devoted to you, they take precedence over everything else because we love them. We're intentional about our love for them. And we must be intentional about our love for God and each other. And to be devoted, it means sacrifice doesn't it it means putting that person before anyone else i think it's true to say that we put first in our lives whatever we love the most we give priority to it now we sometimes say and i've said it myself myself oh i didn't have time i didn't have time to read my bible this morning i didn't have time to pray or worship no i didn't get out of bed in time because i preferred my sleep to pray in or read in my Bible. Let's be honest with ourselves. What do we really mean is that we put recreation or hobbies or family or making money before God. Now, we all have to work, don't we? We have to pay our bills, which are all going up. We have to eat, we have to sleep, we have to care for our children, for family members, but there should still be time and above all desire to meditate on the goodness of God and his love for each one of us. You've all got your hobbies, I've got my hobbies. Some people are addicted to golf, aren't they? I'm not addicted to running, but I do love running. And every Saturday morning, I try to get there. I was there yesterday at Five Arches in Radstock. And over 70 overtook me on the way up. <laughs> and I said to him, how old are you? He said, I'm 70. I said, I'm just a kid, I'm 63. But I, I caught him on the way back, you know. I kicked his Zimmer frame out of the way and <laughs> ran past him. <laughs> but next Saturday, I can't do the park run because I have to be here to help with the spring sale and ride in the cyclothon in the early hours. So I will give it a miss. I'm not saying give up your hobbies, but have priority. Actually, the officers we're going to, they, they are park runners. And they went to the park run in Long Eaton, and he wears a Salvation Army crest on his running vest. And a boy saw it, and he said, oh, my mum used to belong to the Salvation Army. And Key said, did, did she? And she, he said, yeah, he's over here. And he took him, and they had a chat. She was actually an ex-officer, and uh, they invited this uh, ex-officer to the meeting. She came and she got converted again, and she's now an adherent in the corps at Long Eaton. Eaton. God can use us anyway, anywhere. The army, but the army where I worship dev deserves my devotion because it's all part of following Jesus. And it can be fun and joy following Jesus. It doesn't have to be like uh, drinking vinegar. Secondly, when you're devoted and intent on fulfilling the will of God, things start to happen because we're focused on Jesus. The early believers we read in that passage were praying together 
and they were filled with awe at the wonders and signs performed by the apostles. Read Branwell Booth's book, Echoes and Memories, and he's got a chapter there entitled Signs and Wonders, and he speaks about the early day army in the late 1870s in Whitechapel when they had all nights of prayer, and incredible things, incredible things happen in, that, in the early day army. Read that chapter. And three times we read the word, they were together. They were united in love and purpose. When a football team worked together, not just as a bunch of individuals, show-offs, their team win games and score goals. Wasn't it wonderful that Man United beat Man City last night? We thought nobody could beat them yesterday. But hallelujah. I wouldn't say this in Manchester, of course, because there might be Manchester City supporters. Hopefully there's no Man City supporters here. But when a team works together, anything can be achieved. They are not obsessed with themselves. They have a common identity. 1 Corinthians 1.9 declares, God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. I read the Salvation Army daily uh, reading book, Words of Life. And this week, Commissioner Ted Horwood speaks about the different voices that are trying to divide the church and separate the body. Christians, he says, are separating themselves into social divisions, dividing themselves into tribes. And he says, I'm not referring to those who are related as family members or share the same language. Rather, there are those who are grouping together around forces from outside the church, such as ideology, politics, social causes, sexuality. Of course we're all different, but we're forgetting what it means to be the body of Christ. We are called into one fellowship, not many. We all have our different opinions. We have the election in a month, and we will pray about it, and we will vote for whom we believe is the best party to run the country. What matters, though, is God's mission not our latest fashionable talking point. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. We must keep the unity of the body for the sake of the greater good. We can differ, but we must differ in love. Otherwise, the church fractures and splinters and we lose our motivating focus. Actually, it was good this week to hear on the radio when so often they say, oh, the church is declining, the church is getting smaller, that the Church of England has actually increased for the third year in numbers in their worship. That's wonderful, isn't it? And also the children, the YP work of the Church of England has increased again for three years running. It's not all gloom. It's not all doom. Thank God. Thirdly, we have a common relationship through the blessed Trinity. We often say that beautiful grace, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. One, 2 Corinthians 13, 14. It reminds us as the, of the mystery of the Holy Trinity is not known simply as a philosophical explanation, but we can experience, we can experience the blessing of the Trinity in our life. In the Old Testament, in Leviticus, there were five sacrifices made in the temple. There was the burnt offering, there was the grain offering, there was the fellowship offering, there was the sin offering, and the guilt offering. The first three were voluntary, the second two were mandatory. What is interesting is only the fellowship offering and sacrifice was where the person offering it could eat part of the sacrifice and the priest also. It was the only sacrifice. Everything else was burnt and given to God. It was a bit like a fellowship meal. You were sharing part of your sacrifice. It was a bit like a love feast. It symbolized peace and wholeness. It benefited all the parties together because they were one with God as they shared in the sacrifice. The fellowship of God's love 
in our own lives is like that. It's his own reward. The more we worship God, the more we are blessed with the benefits and the love of God. We can enjoy that God is with us here this morning. God is present. 1 John 1, 7 says, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Isn't it great to walk in the light? You know, this week we've had the sun shining, and sometimes you go out, and I'm walking the dog, and the, the sun is just shining on you, and you feel wonderful. And it's the same spiritually when the Son of God shines upon you. When you're doing the will of God, you have peace. Finally, we have a common partnership in the gospel. Philippians 1, 4 and 5 states, Paul says, In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. The first Christians didn't only talk about fellowship, they demonstrated it. They sold their property, they sold their possessions to give to everyone in need, like Barnabas, the encourager who did that very fact. They had open hearts, open homes, open wallets. They were there for one another. It was said that their withness, their togetherness, aids, aided their witness. It was said of the early Christian by a pagan writer, see how they love one another. That was how they described the early Christians. Their generosity was visible. For some reason, having all things in common did not remain the rule of the church. But I think today many Christians help the poorer brethren, don't we? We help the poorer brethren by secret acts of kindness and support in charities. What was the result of the amazing fellowship in Jerusalem? The Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Someone has described true fellowship as a foretaste of heaven because it generates glad and sincere hearts committed to God and to one another. You know, a healthy church will be contagious. It will spread the good news without an effort because it will be bubbling out of everyone who's in it. And my question to you and my question to me this morning is, what are we doing to make this place attract, so attractive that others will just come in and find Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Well, may we have that same spirit that the first Christians had of sharing and loving and caring for one another. We're going to sing a beautiful song by Albert Osborne, song 325 in our songbooks. Spirit of eternal love, guide me or I blindly rove. And the chorus says, fellowship with thee, give me constantly to know fellowship with thee. If you're struggling for some reason at this point in your life, our mercy seat, this place of fellowship, this place of pardon, this place of reunion is always open. And if you just want to come and pray for yourself or for somebody else in your family, then don't be embarrassed or ashamed. It's a place we can freely use. So let's sing these lovely words together and let's just enjoy the fellowship of being one with the Father.
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the divine fellowship we share with you, that your Holy Spirit speaks to our heart and our heart communes with you. Lord, we just thank you for coming into our lives. We thank you because you are the living God. You give us fullness of life, abundant life. And we thank you, Lord, for the beauty of your presence, for the joy of your presence in our families and in our homes and in our fellowship here in the Salvation Army. Lord, we bring to you everyone gathered here this morning, as well as those who, are through sickness or other reasons, work and other reasons cannot be here. And we just lift them up to you. We pray for anyone who has problems or difficulties, who's struggling. We pray for anyone who's encountering medical problems. We pray that your healing hand will be upon them and that you will bring them through with fullness of health. Lord, we thank you for your love to us and we thank you for your generosity in so many ways. Help us to share, Lord, what we have, to share our time, to share our care, to share our money and goods when we can to help those who have less than we do. And be with us and use us in this world. And may the Spirit of Christ reside in us so much that others will see it and want to find out the difference it makes in our lives so it can be make their lives different too. Bless us, Lord, in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Our final song is song 571. 571. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. Let's stand and sing the three verses together.
benediction, let us pray. Lord of all, teach us to recognize that everyone has a place in your purpose and a contribution to make to your kingdom. And so help us to see beyond the barriers that keep us apart to everything that draws us together. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.